Hello and welcome to Let's Learn C++, that's 1.4. Today I'm going to teach you about characters in the ASCII table. Before I do that, I have two new vocab words for you. First one is character. A character is a data type that creates a variable, just like an integer would. The resulting variable can hold a single character. Duh. If it's called a character, you would think it would hold a character, just like an integer holds an integer. Pretty obvious. So the second one is ASCII table. Now ASCII is, I uh, can't remember what the word is, uh, where you have five different words and they represent five, or five different letters and they represent five different words. I can't remember what that's called. But uh, it stands for something really, really long and I don't want to recite it. So I'll just skip that part. And ASCII table. A charted table that relates a single character to a single decimal value. Now, obviously, a computer only knows how to work with numbers. A computer has no idea what the alphabet is. So, what we did is we related every character to a specific number. So that way, whenever the computer sees that number, it knows that it's that character, so it can convert it. And, and uh, vice versa, if it sees that character, what it actually is seeing is the number. So on the ASCII table, if we look at it, we see that a capital A is represented by the number 65. So if we type in a, a capital A anywhere in the computer, then what the computer is actually seeing is the number 65. And that knows that it's a capital A, so it'll output a capital A for us. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with a uh, program that I have devised earlier. What this program does is we have an integer called my integer, and we have a character called my character. Now, you can see that characters are created just like integers, except the identifier is different. So we have the identifier, the data type is char, stands for character, and then the name, my character, and it doesn't have a value in it, neither does the integer. And then we say enter a number to be converted into a character. So then we use our input function, and we're saving the input inside of the, the integer called my integer. So obviously we, we are entering a number because that's what it tells us to input. And then we do our cn.ignore to clear the buffer. Now actually uh, in the last lesson I said I wasn't going to explain that but I decided that I actually am going to explain it just because I now feel like it's important. So the reason why we do that is uh, whenever the user hits enter to submit their input, the buffer is emptied into the variable uh, that is specified right there. However, the buffer is not completely emptied. There's still a delimitating character in there. Uh, for all practice and purposes, we can say that there's an end L inside of there. An end L meaning this. So their their input of enter is stuck inside of the uh, the the input buffer. So what we need to do is we need to clear the input buffer using cn.ignore. So we have to get that last little bit out of there. It's like getting the last drop of orange juice out of the orange juice container. That last drop of orange juice can cause a lot of problems because if we don't clear it and we get down to cn.get, it's going to get that delimitating character out of the buffer and that's going to count as the input for this and then the program won't pause, it'll just end and you won't be able to see your output. So it's important to clear this so that way we can continue working uh, as planned in the program. So now that's that. So let me move on with the program here. So this looks a little weird to you. It does to me and you. My character equals my integer. Now you might be saying what in the world are we doing? You can't set an integer to a character. Their types aren't compatible. I thought an integer could only be set to an integer and a character only set to a character. Well, it turns out that a character is an integer. Remember what I told you about the ASCII table? Every character is related to an integer. That means that they're the same thing, they just have different representations. Now, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to pull up the ASCII table for you. I have it already pulled up over here. So I find this is one of the best websites for it, ASCIItable.com, pretty obvious. So this is our ASCII table, and this is the extended ASCII codes, which they look very strange, and I don't think I would use them very often. But these are the ones we want. 
So all these over here in the first column are pretty much useless nowadays. Some of them are still used, but not very many people use them anymore. What we're really concerned about is 32 all the way through 126. So if you look in here, you see DEC is the first column right here, 32, 33, 34, all the way down to 63. And then it comes over here, transfers over, and transfers over again. And then you can see there's HX, Oct, HTML, and Ker. So HX is hexadecimal. We're not going to worry about that right now. Oct is octal. We're not going to worry about that. Those are two different number systems. One's base 16, the other one's base 8. Guess which ones are which. HTML, we're not going to worry about that because we're not working with HTML. CHR, short for char, short for character. Uh, this is what we're going to worry about. So the decimal column and the character column, the, the one on the left and the one on the right. So we can see that the number 32 represents a space. The number 33 represents an exclamation point. Uh, the number 65, like I said earlier, represents a capital A. Number 97 here represents a lowercase a. So you can see that each integer is related to a character just right across the board there. Now I'm going to show you that the computer knows this just by running this. So you can see we enter a character, or sorry, we enter a number up here, and then we store that number inside of our character. Now watch what happens when I run this. This is going to blow your mind. I know it blew mine when I first saw it. All right, enter a number to be converted into a character. I'm going to enter the number 65, just like we were talking about. Your number was 65. Your character is A, capital A. So you can see in our program here, we, in, we inputted an integer right here. Then we cleared the buffer. Then we set the character equal to the integer. So we transferred the number 65 into the character. And the computer's like, hang on, that's an integer. We convert that, and it converts it to a capital A from the ASCII table. And then, and then we output both of them just like that. So now let me run it again. Uh, let's say... 34. Your number was 34. Your character is quotation mark. Let's take a look at the ASCII table here. Number 34, followed across, we have a quotation mark here on the board. So that's exactly right. Let's run it again. Turn number to be converted into a character. Let's try 47. Your character is a slash. So look at our ASCII table, 47, we have a slash, just like that. So you can see it's converting back and forth just perfectly. Now, that is all I have for you in this lesson. It feels like it's a really short lesson, but looking at the timer, it's about the same, so never mind. But anyway, just play it around with that. See what happens when you switch the two, like maybe input a character and set it to an integer. See what happens there. Uh, Maybe just mess around with it. All right. I'll see you in the next lesson.